Okay, hi guys. This is Spirit Journey. Whoa. <laughs> yeah, this is Spirit Journey, and I'm out and about. And you know, um, yeah, they're gonna be. I have to get them from the doctors. Okay. See you. Yeah. <laughs> I guess he recognized me with the dogs. Yeah. It is a beautiful day. Last time I saw was about 84 degrees. Today's date is July 2, 2020, and the time is 10 to 1. I have uh, to get to the, uh, the vet hospital by 2 o'clock to get my little baby. Yes, my little baby, Lila. Yeah? So it's going to take at least an hour, I think. But maybe sooner. Yeah, I'm, I have the stroller. Let me just show you that. I have to turn it around. See that? See that? I set it up. I used her blanket. She has my purse. Yeah. So, I'm here to... Uh, well, I have to get the feel of this but yeah um, I was gifted this um, doggy stroller about two days ago the day that my little baby got uh, the, the morning after um, for my baby my baby Shih Tzu to the hospital yeah they had come by they had mentioned uh, maybe two weeks that they wanted to give me this and boy did it come in handy because my uh, shopping cart was getting kind of um, some of the spokes were falling out and I was always concerned that the little foot might get caught in the wheels even though I, I put something to try to uh, prevent it from happening but you know things happen so uh, yeah, so uh, this is the first time I'm going outside. And, uh, wow, this thing is a tough ass uh, baby stroller. I mean, a doggy stroller. They, it has mammoth size wheels, you know? Mammoth size. Wow. And what else? What else? Um, yeah, it's fantastic. This thing will really do well when I um, when I go to um, Central Park some of those real rocky areas but of course I'm not going to go climbing up a, you know the stairs with this but it, it's designed I mean this thing is so so tough boy I just saw her I just saw the person that gifted this to me uh, when I went out today to walk my two other dogs yes and I'm being very discreet you know she want me to be very discreet about it and yes I will <laughs> but yeah I said thank you honey yeah this app I mean this thing is really awesome really really awesome Yeah, so this um, carriage actually, it, it'll carry one dog in luxury, two dogs in comfort. I have to just tie something. My shoelace, my laces for my boots. Yeah. Yeah, I crossed over so I can stay in the shade, yeah. So I got like an hour, a good hour. But I think I might get there early. Yeah, this thing seems, is real sturdy. It has little brakes. Uh-huh, I mean, this thing is really decked out. Really, she said, Mommy, you be going in style. She says, you don't want to use that other thing. You know, I felt a little awkward at first. I said, you know, it, it, it does its function. It transports. You know, that's all I'm, I'm concerned about. 
Oh wow, she, she, bingo baby, bingo. <laughs> yes, bingo baby. She, uh, yeah, she hooked me up. Good. Yes, this thing is awesome, awesome, awesome. Yeah, excuse me. Sorry about that. Yeah, it's, it's probably over 84 degrees. Um, I have my water. Yeah, I brought my little water. And her water, my little baby's water. The blanket for, to, to lie on and then a, a covering um, in case it gets cold. I doubt that. I doubt that. I have my umbrella. Yeah, it's been raining real heavy. Yeah. So, oh, I'm sorry, my finger. I apologize. My finger went over the hole. My apology. Yeah, so, um, I'm very fortunate. And, um, yeah, I want to just, um, I want my little baby girl back to health. She has to stay immobile for at least, strictly for four weeks, four solid weeks. Yep. And then what? Uh, uh, then I have to go back for like a follow-up, you know? Yeah, this is hot. Definitely walk in the shade. Yeah, I, you know, I commend you mommies. You mommies that got like two, three kids, totaled them away, man. I, I commend you for your strength. You know, it's a big responsibility. You got to make sure you got all your stuff, all the stuff you're going to need. Oh, I forgot a little treat. Well, yeah, she, um, my baby girl, she, the, the doctor said she did eat a little bit um, in her, you know, what was that, about four something today. Yes, the hospital called me today around, around 9.30 and she ate a little bit of her food. And I told them twice, she uh, doesn't eat kibble, she eats a soft food. So that's good to know. Yeah, I told the doctor from the get-go when, when she was to stay over, I said, she eats soft food, she does not eat kibble. Yeah. So I gotta give her a lot of love. It's something when you have, uh, you know, someone living with you when they're not there, and you know you, they're not gonna be there that, that day, you feel, an emptiness. You know, you feel you feel like a, something's missing. It's a, it's a different energy. And even though she's the most quiet dog, but still their presence is felt. Yeah. I I feel her absence, but I have I have peace. I have peace inside. But now, when uh, Lily, the the happiness I had. When she had to go to the hospital, um, that was in April, I believe. I, I, I think I was crying. I, um, I was more, I had a lot of anxiety. And I think part of the reason why I had the anxiety was, uh, you know, she, she, how she got hurt. She was just being happy. She was just being a little Havanese. And we're just doing the zoo, what they call the zoomies. And uh, she tore a meniscus in her knee and the tendon um, and I felt badly for her. She was just trying to get mommy's attention and you know it happened that quick but she's pretty much recuperated. Um, I still carry her a little bit. She likes to be carried and again I don't want her to overdo it because we didn't we haven't been going out a lot a lot. I mean I had them as you saw in my videos. I, I was strolling them to Central Park and everything. 
That's sight. I have a dog like just like that. Yeah, yeah. Wow. That, it looked like my, my little Shih Tzu. Same color and everything. Wow. Sorry. So, what was I just saying? Oh, well, um, yeah, so I, oh, well, I think I was going to say, <laughs> but yeah, so I am going to pick her up now, and uh, I want her to feel comfortable. I want to let her know I love her. Oh, wow, you know, I, here's something, the, the past few weeks, I, Look, look at her and say, you know, I'm so happy that you're in my life. And look in her eyes. She doesn't complain. She doesn't. And sometimes I feel I could be better, better uh, parent. You know, it's always more that one could do. You know, it's always more. But she, but uh, she. I love how when she greets me by the door when I come in. Yeah, just the day before, she greeted me at the door with the other two dogs I have. It was so beautiful. It was so beautiful. And things could happen that quick. Nothing happened the day before, but maybe the telltale sign was she'll be, she liked to go in the corner. So maybe she was feeling pain and that last walk she had just kind of put her over the edge, you know. I'm so sorry for her. So hard. Sorry for her. Yeah. Dogs are really blessings in disguise. They really are. Your pets, I mean, I used to have birds, cats, and you know, I think sometimes we humans, because of our position, we may not respect them as much as we should. You know, meaning like you want your own way. You know, like she like stop, 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 and then pull. You know, she should do that pose. Uh, you know, if you're familiar with New York City on Wall Street, they have this bull that's in a stance like, you know, you can't budge me. That's what my little dog would do. And I'm wondering <laughs> when she does that, I'm wondering whether that might have pulled her, her back. So I have to be really conscious now that what I might think is nothing to that little girl. You know, she, she is more delicate than the others. She is. She has a more sensitive GI tract. If she doesn't eat, like if her tummy gets empty for too long, she'll throw up bile. And that, that bothers me, you know. Uh, very really the others, sorry, very really the others that would happen to, but it would happen to lilac. I mean, it's not all the time, but it happens. So you have to make sure you feed them. And I told the hospital that too. They said, oh, well, we give them medication for that so they won't throw up. I said, okay. So, yeah, she's a nice little girl. Very nice little girl. So when I get to the hospital, they're going to show me, you know, give me the papers of what she has to do, you know, for post op. That would be good. Yeah, but ba based on what they say, you know, she has to, you know, be crated and you have to be with her at all times, you know. You know, if you're gonna walk away for a moment or something, they said, put her in that crate. Don't, don't have her, uh, unattended okay so I have to crate for her yeah I, I actually bought it for lavender 
This is the wire one that uh, you might have seen before. So it's it's, it's big. Uh, it's it's spacious for her. It's spacious for her. So. So, what else? Uh, sorry, I have to keep my eyes out too. Um, yeah, so, what else? Yeah, so they, they gave me the, they'll be giving me the exit papers and I, you know what I'm also thinking about? Do I have these magnets? So I'm thinking to help with the healing process to, you know, put a mag, you know, hold a magnet over her, her incision, near her incision, to stimulate um, circulation to promote healing. Yeah. What else? So uh, have any of you seen my uh, the video I did? I put it up um, this uh, late last night. Yeah, um, I learned something. I learned about a particular thing that happened in New York history. Yeah, there was two things, and, and I found it by chance. And that's what uh, the beauty with um, YouTube. You might find a video, and then it gives you information on something else so I was actually looking at uh, um, young Pharaoh and in the PowerPoint presentation you know the, yeah, the PowerPoint presentation he was giving that there were children being found in an underground tunnel and it was about 35,000 uh, youngsters and some of them pre-teens that were pregnant. And this happened, the, the thing, oh, when was it uh, uploaded? It could have been, yes, it was in April. Yeah. And, um, and that one led me to another video because I went on the main, like, young Pharaoh who posted that info, he got it from a, a website. So I wanted to verify it, and so I went on the, web, the other person's website, and lo and behold, I found it. And that one gave me information on something else about the about the Seneca Village. Yeah, Seneca Village in beautiful Central Park. I will never look at Central Park the same way again. Yeah. And well, the other thing, in short, uh, message for the viewer is you better teach your children local history. You hear that? Your children need to know. When you live on a land, you should know what happened on that piece of land that you're on. Yep. You, it, it's, a, it's essential. So, um, what happened in Seneca Village, for, for you folks who haven't seen the video, video that I did last night that I posted, Seneca Village, well, in the 1800s, I think it was 1820s, New York City, as we know of New York City, uh, New York City, or well, state of New York, had slavery. But it was slowly releasing the slave system. And Towards the end of their so-called emancipation, the government was um, bringing in more Europeans. And so, uh, early New York history, people lived in Lower Manhattan. And you, some of you might have heard of the African burial ground. And that when they were digging around, they found remains of of the Africans that were brought here 
to become enslaved. And they still built the buildings around them. Shame on them. And that was during the Clinton presidency. That's right. Clinton is not your friend. But anyways, uh, the, 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 like with the new arrivals, and here these people uh, fought in the uh, revolution, American Revolution, and not given the dignity. And when these new European immigrants came in, they were being ganged up on. Sorry about that. They were being ganged up on by the, Europe, the new arrivals from Europe. So the government was issuing out land way uptown, what would become 82nd Street. And uh, it was considered a wilderness. Um, so this man, black man, bought three plots of land. And when the other blacks in the community heard about it, they said, hey, we might as well go there too. So they started a community. And it was called Seneca Village. And then guess what happens? You had Germans and Irish move in with them, move in the, the area. But according to records, it seemed like they might have, it, it, was, it might have been a positive relationship. Some of them intermarried and buried together. But guess what happened? So typical. Uh, another, what they call bl the first Black Wall Street. Yeah, if you know what I'm alluding to. Yeah, the, you had the, uh, the people who were, the, the, the thank you, the, the rich uh, white people. They had uh, hooked up with the government and said, you know, we have all this land and we want our place here to look just as beautiful as what we see in Europe with the gardens there. And of course the people protested and said, hey, no, this is our home. And they lost, they lost the argument and they were forcibly removed. They were given uh, monies. And so look at this. So you have rich white, white folk who wanted this, uh, you know, uh, move people so they can have a garden. How selfish. How selfish. They could have gone up, uh, around them or further up where they live. See, it's arrogance and it suggests to me that it was a, an intentional, uh, an intentional move, political move to unsettle them so they won't have commerce, they won't have community, they won't have wealth. I mean, they own that land. And they name called them, they called them squatters and other horrible names. And these people did those other people no harm. Remember, they moved from downtown Manhattan and to just save the peace and own sanity, they moved up north when they heard the government was uh, selling land. So here what the government does, hey, we got this land. You buy it, you set it up, and if the government doesn't like you because of your race or national, whatever, they'll say, oh, we just wanna, hey, plant another garden. Or hey, we wanna uh, place a highway in this land. European Americans never do anything out of, uh, because they just had a, an idea. It's always political and it's always for them and their arrogance.
and it's the first time I ever heard of this. I think I would like to do some research on where these people move to. See that how how biased the whole system is. You don't even really want to, you don't even care where they move to. They don't care. Hear that? They don't even care. But I found something that I shared in the video of some locations where they might have gone to. And you know what I'm wondering? Whether those flats in uh, Seneca Village, whether they're the ones that moved out to Long Island, you know? I'm wondering. People have to go somewhere. They, don't, they just don't vanish. But it gave me a sense of pride, see? Blacks in the Americas, see, we're being bombarded by evil Hollywood. Hollywood shows us pictures and feelings against black people. They set the pace, whether you feel shame or whether you feel pride, right? That's why it's so essential that you have to know your local history on that land. No, so you know the games they play and study it so you could find out ways how to outsmart them. Do something. So it's something, the same game is being played now. So here, these people, they resided from what's now 82nd Street to about 87th Street. Um, and then they removed, what was the point I was going to mention? Um, yeah, so this is in between the east and the west side of Central Park. Central Park is in a, re a rectangular shape. And it, it, it sits standing upward, you know, so it's a... Uh, when you look up north, it, it runs north, north to south. Uh, so, sorry, I'm trying to get my thoughts. <laughs> so, um, we have a community that has been there before all these people lived there. They were like one of the first people to move uptown and in Manhattan where all this melee happened happened in the area that's considered very desirable the 80s in Manhattan whether east or west side yeah and so what I didn't mention in the video yesterday I said you know something when black people go walk there he said you know we're here before you Seneca village and remind them that we were living in Seneca village mm-hmm so you're not alien per se you know you were there before them you set up shop and then they you know then they prevented us and restricted us. Yeah, it's very essential for me to find, uh, I think it's very essential for me to find out where these people went, what happened to them. Well, see, it'll give you a, a window image of what they're going to do to you again. Oh, yes. Whites don't invent new stuff. They just recycle the old. And so... It's very important. So when we, when you go to a neighborhood, no, hey, we were here before. You, you kicked us out. And remember a couple of videos ago, uh, I, I used to live uptown, way uptown, and a whole bunch of whites live there now. Yeah, I, I lived in the area where most of the buildings on that side street were all burned out. Or, or gutted 
and not not habitated. Inhabited, I'm sorry, inhabited. So then I go there just a couple of days ago and I see that they have cafes occupied by white people. And this area again was uh, a druggy place. Extremely infested with drugs. Yeah, I, and I told the story of I, I, was, I had a, a, a Caucasian friend. She had a car with New Jersey license plate. And she was just driving me home. And guess what happened? Immediately when she stopped in front of my door, you know, where, where I lived at that time, a whole bunch of dudes surrounded the car. They thought we were going for drugs. So this is telling me. Now, I didn't realize that at the time. I was very naive of things like that. And this is the first time I lived in a neighborhood like this. I, I used to live in uh, Queens, New York City. It's one of the five boroughs, Queens. And now this was Manhattan. And this was up, way uptown. And I wasn't uh, exposed to that directness of uh, commerce for drug solicitation. Yeah. So that's how bad it was, the area. But I loved the area because it was a place where I, you know, that I called mine. You know, it was a rental and I took pride in it. Yeah, I had a slumlord and I had to bring him to court. Oh, sorry. I had to bring him to court. But things like that happen, you know. It, it was a learning experience. And he was a black man, too, from Panama. Not a slumlord could be any race. That's right. It could be any race. So it's the heart of the person. There's a lot of greed out there. Yeah, it's it just totally, it's just reinforcing to me that this is a slave planet. This is a prison and we're stuck. And the different hierarchies of enslavement, we're all stuck on this planet. And we have to uh, somehow survive and earn credit. Credit based on physical labor of some type, some type of labor, and then you get what they call money. It's all a scam. This is not a natural system, the monetary system. It's so unnatural. And I even said in past videos how to break this cycle so of dependency on money. Everything, even if you buy a house and you pay cash for it, you have to pay tax. And guess what? If you don't pay your taxes, they'll, they'll boot you off. And anyone who pays the tax that's for that piece of land, they get the property. See that? Isn't that evil? So in actuality, you don't own anything. You don't own the land. So who does? Who really owes the, owns the land? Well, I think that's the big secret. That is the big secret, I believe. And it's tied in with the IRS. Someone told me the IRS, that it's linked to Britain and they collect the funds. Wow, it's such an evil place. Such an evil, evil. Yeah, I, I didn't know that Britain uh, treats blacks as bad as I found out. I, I found a new uh, individual, I forget his name. Uh, he, I know his name starts with an A. <laughs> it's a three letter word. <laughs> no, four letter word, his name. And he's an author of many books and he is a byproduct of a uh, white mother from Britain, but I think her background is German, and her father uh, was from Jamaica originally, a black man from Jamaica, yeah? And it's amazing, even though 
he is a mixed race. They treat him, I should say the whites there, treat him like a criminal. They said when he was 12 years old, he got frisked by a cop. See, they do that mind control and traumatization there in Britain. How awful. You know, see, see how wicked that queen is. It's an evil, evil system. And I, I hold her to, but she didn't invent it, the system, but she upholds the system because of her lineage. Yeah, it's an evil system. So, this person became knowledgeable about the history of, of, of black people. And he studies it. And I said, more power to him, you know? More power to him. Wow, I'm dripping sweat in my back. It is really hot. Really, really hot. So it's really sad how people, you know, this, this the whole Anglo-Saxon thing. It's an evil system. And you know, before, they were even sending blacks to um, Britain because they, they brought slaves to uh, Britain also. But the white people there also, they uh, abused them also. It's a, what they call a class system. A class system. Yeah, it's a, it's a class system. And everybody wants to feel that they're better. And you know, I, I used to watch a lot of shows, British shows with my, with my mom. And I noticed the shows, it's all about serving. Serving, that, that's your job, to serve. And they do it with such uh, etiquette. I mean, they, it's, it's so systematic, so robotic. But I think this is all part of the programming programming of being British, white supremacy, and uh, saying that you control everything, that you, you're like a god. I'm, I'm happy about you two, that I'm able, to be, I'm able to find these different videos and learn the history that my school didn't teach us. Yeah, it's a whole, this Crescent Street, it's a whole history. And they, they don't teach this. See, when I went to public school, you were taught by whites mostly. In elementary school, I had two black teachers, two female, two black female teachers. No black men. Junior high school, there was, uh, I think, one black teacher, he was an art teacher. And then I had one black female math teacher in junior high school. High school, all of them were white. And the white teacher, white female teachers uh, were that typical, what they call a Karen. Now I learned that new terminology, Karen. They weren't nice people. And I could feel their, their, their bias towards me. And I never, I, I didn't understand why. See, I don't come from the South. You know, someone from the South, they know exactly what the deal is, you know, in uh, segregation. Well, up north, it's, it's socially segregated. And as you see with Seneca Village, that black people are systematically targeted. They get new people, two against one, antagonize them and force you out. And that's what's happening in New York City now. They bring in new immigrants and then they target you. I was targeted in Hawaii and that's a, a so-called place of color. 
I found them to be the most racist, that, that state. I mean, there are different types of people that live there, but more, the majority of the people there are Asian Pacific mix, like Filipino and Hawaiian, or Chinese Hawaiian, things like that. Well, they were very direct in their race. So you, you think you're in the South. Yeah. I mean, it's beautiful land and everything. And I didn't meet the most number of people that were nice, you know, socially. But it was a really hard place economically. I just, and I just got fed up. So, from well, seeing the, vid the, the video, on that Seneca village, I said, I don't want to leave. This is my home. And I don't want any foreigner or local person to bully me, to cause me harm, emotional or physical harm, and force me to go. It's not fair. It's like people love rap music, they like hip, we call hip hop, reggae, jazz, but they don't want the black person. They're, they're thieves and liars. They're thieves, and, and then now, they're thieving the history of Africa. They want to uh, convince themselves that the ancient Egyptians were Europeans, or the progenitor of the European as we know today. And I think that's how they gain power. I think they're the new kid on the block. And when you're able to convince someone that they are somebody else, that is a, like a witchcraft. It is so witchery what they do. Yep. It's, 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 a, it's a witchcraft. It's mind control. So it just goes to show you people and, and what, why I feel so proud now to be a member of the black race or African race. Because see, when whites do this or, and encourage other ethnicities to follow in their pursuit, it just shows to me then I'm extremely valuable. You hear that? I'm valuable and I'm strong. I have strong genetics. I'm durable. Uh, we're, we're, not, we're not so much fixated about things. But I find that now with social media, they have a new serpent in town called those music videos and now they tantalize you with the dancing, the, the music, the singing and you want to be just like them. Even at your own demise, you, you want to role play like you're a gangster, right? Or you're a sex vixen if you're a female. And they, they're, they're not encouraging you to what you call, oh, how do you call it now? They're not encouraging you to study, read books, read your history. They don't, they, in fact, when I was in the seventh grade, American black kids said, oh, to act up on so-and-so's class because they're white. Now that's a dumb mother. Yeah, see that's a, you, you have a lot of dumb, dumb people. The mother should have said, hey, you better study hard and form your own business. About community. It's a real black woman teaches about community and teaches them to be self-sufficient. You gotta teach your kids black people. You, you, you have no excuse. You have the computers that you could research things. You could teach yourself. You don't have to go to college. And, and then you, you want to hook up with people who are not from your community to be accepted by them. 
And then the next thing you know, those people are sending the money that you give them for their own community. So you're robbed again. You are being robbed, people. It's horrible. Absolutely horrible. Yeah, you don't, you don't teach it. You got to teach your history. I'm not ashamed. I mean, when I, when I learned about the Seneca Village, I felt so much pride, baby. Yes, I did. See, it's not about having a pretty history that, you know, you were a conqueror and this and that. People get all, like to get off on that. No. Real history shows the heart of the people and how they endured. It's about endurance. And, you know, it's, it's not impressive when a rich person, um, born rich, uh, gets a rich business. That's not impressive. But hardships and building character is what's more important. And you're not teaching your kids about integrity. You have to teach that. You want to teach the illusion of those videos. And you see who runs those videos. Who owns those music companies? It's not us. You do have some that I heard that, that they have uh, some... Uh, production company, you know, and what do you what do you hear about them? That they're killing each other, right? You know why we're killing each other? Because you don't like yourself. You don't like yourself. Why don't you like yourself? Because you're too busy wanting to be Barbie doll and and Kent. That's right. And so when you see your own, you're you're seeing uh, someone that you're not being oriented to. You want to see Barbie or Ken, but you see a black face instead. And so what happens? You start to abuse yourself. You abuse your body with the drugs, with the promiscuity, uh, lying on each other, thugging each other. But you know, you're not bothering the people who are actually oppressing you. You go along, beg, beg them for money, and act all, all holy around them, but then you treat your own like a piece of poo-poo. Remember when I talked about when I got groped, and I went to the store that was right next to me, and the black girl talked to me, she was a very young black girl, and she talked to me very harshly. She says, why can't you call yourself? What, you don't got a phone? Where's your phone? Something to that effect. Really hostile. See, there's no, excuse me. Excuse me. See, there's no sense of community. There's no community. You're about yourself, your own little world. You know, she's so grateful she got a, uh, a job uh, flipping burgers. It was at Shake Shack. Yeah, it was Shake Shack. In, in Manhattan, yeah. So she's happy to get a job there. It probably pays minimum wage, right? And she didn't care. That's what's happening now. We're not caring about one another because you just want to get the money so you can get your hair and nails done so you look like little Barbie doll, right? Miss Barbie doll. And then when you have a black woman who gets her education and dresses like a lady and speaks like a lady, you criticize her and say that she wants to be white. Well, don't you? <laughs> don't you want to be white? That's why you, you fight each other. Why you, you steal from each other. Because you'll do anything to get what those other people that you want, that, that you want, have. To have. You have to go through the illusion. So you can't bring the jewelry, the money. You can't bring it with you when you when you when you die. You can't bring your house with you. Nothing. And, and as I told you, you don't pay your taxes on your house that you build with your own sweat and tears. 
You don't pay those taxes. You lose your property. And it could have been in your family for hundreds of years. That's right. So none of us really own anything. And when the government or that system that's in control wants to make a change, they just squeeze their hand, squeeze their hand, such as raise your taxes, impose more restrictions on you. Oh yes, yeah, they'll do that. It's very sad. Yeah, I'm on the east side right now. Yeah, I'm going on uh, 62nd Street between York and uh, on that other street, Federal, what is it, um, FDR Drive, I think it's called. Yeah, so it's the extreme east of Manhattan. Yeah, this is considered a uh, upper, upper social economic area. I avoid the east side as much as possible. I do. I used to, when I first came to Manhattan, my school was right here, right in this neighborhood actually. Okay, this is 3rd Avenue. My school used to be on 68th Street on Lexington. You know, so it was in the vicinity. Yeah? It used to be an all girls school, you know, college. And then I think it went co ed when I, when I entered or the year before. Yep. Yeah, you have to love yourself. See, we act out. And we start to act ugly. Right? Because they told you you were ugly. So what do you do? You're, you look angry. No woman wants to feel that she's unattractive. So you start to scorn. Right? You, you look like a frown. And then you start to fight. And you know what else? What we don't talk about. What else happens in the black community? rape. Many of our little girls are molested and raped by family members. Of course, this also occurs in white communities too. But I think it happens a lot in black communities because of slavery. That children, I, I, I have a feeling that even children were, were raped to traumatize them so you can control them. Yep. These Anglo-Saxons are masters at Mind control, trauma-based mind control. Now, how could, like the West Indies, how could a few number of whites be able to control a bunch of captives on a small island? How are you able to do that? Coercion. I, I had opportunity, as I told you, videos ago. I used to live in the Caribbean for three and a half years in the U.S. Virgin Islands of St. Thomas. And I witnessed this black fellow being afraid of this white tourist. See, their program, the white, the black man is in the West Indies, especially if it's a, a dark-skinned black man, that to fear white men because what happened in history that if you don't do what they say you don't move out the way they can beat you so that fear oh and again let's say you work on black a black west indian and you work on a let's say at a hotel well what what's the end of the hotel you have to kiss the the person's behind you have to cater to them. It's just another form of slavery. Servitude. That's why I feel very uncomfortable with the concept of going to the West Indies for vacation because I think it's a, an extension of slavery to do their hands, do their feet, give them body massage, do, do all these things. And I, and I look at the, those commercials and I feel uncomfortable. But the only thing I'm seeing is slavery. Yeah. And you know what else? When I, I worked in the West Indies, I had an office job. And 
One day I was in the cafeteria. This is a small company. It's a utilities company. And there was a black fellow, West Indian, very dark skinned, very professional. He wore a beautiful, beautiful suit. Very, very Wall Street. And I used to live in, or work in Wall Street too. Uh, and then this person, uh, he, he had come in to eat his lunch. And he sees two men, they, they were auditors, they were new there. They were, they're just there for a short time and they go back to the U.S. mainland. And then he sits down next to them and says, hey, how you doing? Really friendly. And the two white dudes looked at him like he was a parasite, looked at him so disgustedly, got up immediately and walked out the room. And then the West Indian, the black guy, just kind of shrugs, like he's kind of like, what is this? Yeah, see, they're, they're not really familiar with, with uh, uh, modern white racism. He, he's um, West Indian and he's intelligent and he goes to the school, you know, the mainland for college. And then you go back. So he feels just as equal as these white counterparts. So it's probably the first time he experienced that blatant hatred. Yeah. I feel so awful for him. Yeah, I, I never forgot that. Never. I thought it was so evil of those white guys. See, I, see, I saw a lot. I saw a lot, a lot of things, and I needed to see these things to break, for me to break free from the programming I received. Yeah, I, I, I was programmed to uh, cater to them, and I, but I always had a question in my mind: so why am I acting this way? Why, why, like if I'm with them, like just because I'm with a person who's why it doesn't mean that I want to follow them. I, I'm, I'm me too. Why can't you follow my culture? So it's an assumption that when you're with them, you have to be about their business. And I never want to do that again. I'm, 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 re I'm repulsed by them, by the behavior. Yeah? yeah? I have like one or two more blocks left. Yeah, I, I, uh, I'm starting to see the true evil that many of them have. That many of them are, are hypocrites in what they do. But you know, anyone could be a hypocrite and a liar and a thief. But I, I, uh, I want to have, I want to live in dignity. That is my, that is my aim. I want to live in dignity. Uh, I want to share the knowledge that I learn about life and that's why as you said I've been putting up a lot of videos I, I have to be careful because I do get uh, neck problems so that's why I don't do a lot of editing I just uh, do like like this one I'm just doing a straight video and just uh, upload it without the editing or minimum editing I might just make sure the audio is loud and that's about it Yep. So, yeah, be, be proud of yourself. See, if we realize, if you only knew that a game is being played on us, we're being played. All of us. And I think, as I said, it's a hierarchy of control. Right now, the whites are being used to do stuff, but I see that they're getting white people too. Yeah, white people are gonna be wiped out also. Yeah, it's a system of control, and they're using this COVID as an excuse to limit people's freedoms, to usher in what they call um, martial law, and make you afraid. And I was just watching someone's video that fear, when you're in constant fear, some of the symptoms of this fear could be what they call um, pneumonia. See that? 
so you have all these people now who has uh, pneumonia slash COVID. See that? They want you sick. They want to impose all this fear on you so you, you, your immune system will, will weaken. And what else? You will start to go cuckoo. Some of you might commit suicide. All these things because of stress. These people who are in control are truly wicked people. And I tell both, you know, all people to see through them, the, these, these deceivers that are controlling the planet. And whatever what your background is, in meditative prayer, you curse them. That's right, you heard me right. You put a curse on them that if they don't release you, and leave you alone that you wish them harm yep and that they perish whatever what, what's on your heart yeah you gotta you gotta out them you have to out them it's it's, it's an evil that's being done so so it's really sad about things but yeah the, the whole world the whole planet is in danger the whole planet but you know, we, we are survivors, folks. We, we are stronger than we really are. And I have to remind myself that. I have to remind myself. Yeah, I see this in the next block. Yeah. Remind yourself, tell your children that you are worthy. You are special, you are loved. And you are indigenous. You are indigenous. Always remember that. Stick to community and work together. And that's the only way how you're gonna get rid of your oppressor, yeah? And see through their, their deceit. They get two against one. Then they get rid of that one. And then those two remaining, they put another third person in there and then they do the whole cycle again. Yeah, so don't believe the hype. Don't think that you are immune because they're gonna get you too. Like with this COVID, they're messing you over. Yes, yeah, so I'm just about here. I see people standing out there. So I thank you for this uh, opportunity to share what's on my heart. Yeah, this bill is going to be something. I thank you for listening. Definitely share this video with friends, family members. Give me the like. And uh, those of you who want to support me on my channel, you could PayPal me. Just go to my channel, Spirit Journey. And on the right side of the banner, you see my PayPal me link. And the amount would be appreciated. Thanking you again. Take care and enjoy your day. Bye-bye.